The city now doth like a garment wear the beauty of the morning, all bright and glittering in the smokeless air. So William Wordsworth, poet of 200 years ago, wrote about London's Westminster Bridge as it was then. He might have been speaking of Sheffield today, for the city's smokeless air gives it a justifiable claim as one of the cleanest industrial cities in Europe, thanks to a smoke control policy started in 1959. Gone is the pre-war smoke and grime, even though steel making is still at the heart of the city's heavy industry. Steel, to be rolled, forged, pressed, built into our modern lives in countless essential ways. Steel, in over a thousand different types, particularly high-grade and special steels in which Sheffield has an undisputed lead. The highest degree of purity is achieved by special melting techniques, for example by a vacuum induction furnace, the largest in Western Europe. Steel for other industries, large and small, Steel for the factory and for the home. They've been making cutlery here for centuries. 600 years ago, the poet Chaucer said of his miller in his Canterbury Tales, a Sheffield whittle bore he in his hose. Modern Sheffield silverware carries on a proud craftsman's tradition, each piece hallmarked in the city's assay office, the purity of silver guaranteed. Today, the range of high-quality tableware is increased by the use of stainless steel, sophisticated, clean. In 1743, Sheffield gave its name to silver fused onto copper, and the world's best collection of old Sheffield plate is on permanent display in the Sheffield Museum. The cutlers banded together in 1643 to protect their craft. They still do. They still fight in the law courts of the world to reserve the proud title made in Sheffield for where it rightly belongs. And they still meet regularly, the cutlers, with proper pomp and ceremony. Sheffield joins in national celebrations as well as local. Guy Fawkes Day, Bonfire Night, has a popularity true to Northern England. Old England, the Pennine backbone of limestone, stalactites, millstone grit, burial grounds 4,000 years old, an early British hill fort lies within the city boundary, ancient rocks for recreation and for industry. Over these mountains in the centre of England, early Britons fought and mixed their blood with Romans and Vikings. At the very edge of Sheffield in the suburb of Dore, King Egbert in the year 829 was proclaimed King of all England. William the Conqueror's Normans founded an abbey, Beau Chef, and in the centre of the town built a castle now gone without trace. Within these castle walls, at the unyielding command of Queen Elizabeth I, the Earl of Shrewsbury held Mary, Queen of Scots, prisoner. For 14 years she was captive, sometimes taken to Chatsworth House, just outside the town, sometimes kept in the Manor Lodge, still partially standing near the site of the old castle. 17th century England, harsh for prisoners and for the free. Rats brought bubonic plague. It swept out of London in 1665 and its death...
march northwards was halted by the martyr village of Eam, where the infected villagers denied themselves contact with the world outside their parish, and nearby Sheffield escaped. Sheffield grew in area, in population, in industry, especially in the work of its smithies along the five river valleys. Scythes were made at Abbeydale by the River Sheaf, and this hamlet of workshops and cottages has been restored to working order and won a top award from the British Tourist Authority for enterprise and the conservation of places of national interest. Another national award from the Civic Trust was won by modern extensions to the cathedral completed in 1969. There's been a parish church in Sheffield since Norman times, and an ancient Saxon cross, now in the British Museum, is evidence of Christian worship here over a thousand years ago. Today's Christmas illuminations are more extensive in this city than anywhere else in the country. The city has, of course, the usual public services, and all of them have some special claim for honour and respect. The fire service, for instance, is one of the few in the country with a multiplex system whereby eight modern stations can be alerted simultaneously. The equipment and communication provide a service in excess of home office requirements. The service was fully stretched in the Second World War. On two nights, just before Christmas 1940, during 12 hours of bombing, largely with incendiaries, 800 people were killed, 80,000 houses damaged, and the commercial centre of the city mutilated beyond recognition. After the war, and after long and careful planning, the local authority, with gathering momentum, continued clearing slums and began rebuilding in such a bold and imaginative manner that worldwide attention has been caught. Many features of the new city are internationally recognised as showpieces of civic development. Outworn residential areas have been replaced by modern dwellings. The massive Hyde Park and Park Hill communities make the biggest single development of its kind in Western Europe. 2,317 homes in the very centre of the city. Each year since 1963, Sheffield has averaged 2,000 new dwellings by municipal building and another 1,000 by private enterprise. In the City Corporation's development at Gleedless Valley, its Mediterranean style has won international praise, precious trees have been preserved and the natural contours of the foothills skillfully exploited. Some of the landscaping is superb. Whilst vigorous and up-to-date in their rebuilding, the authorities are not unmindful of the merits of conservation. Paradise Square was once a public meeting place. John Wesley is said to have had his biggest weekday congregation here. The nonconformist church has strong traditions in the city, and Sunday school gatherings fill several public parks each Whitsuntide.
Country dancing has its devotees even in an industrial city, perhaps strengthened in Sheffield by the closeness of open countryside. A sense of the open country is easily felt. The number of parks and open spaces is generous. As much as one-tenth of the total acreage of the city is public open space, a greater proportion than for any other industrial city of Britain. Opportunities for open-air recreation are many and various for the energetic or the idle, in peace and quiet, or in noisy jollity, for active participation or for watching, for young and for old, the annual Sheffield show regularly attracts family crowds. Pony trekking, athletics, harriers, motorcycling, lawn tennis, archery, rugby, hockey, fishing, judo, skiing, homing pigeons, gliding, there are clubs for all of them and more. Innumerable bowling greens, eight riding schools, seven golf courses, nine swimming pools, 130 tennis courts and over a hundred municipal football and cricket pitches. As well as countless amateur activities, there are two professional football clubs internationally recognised, Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday. Water for Sheffield and District, over 50 million gallons a day for about a million thirsty throats, comes from reservoirs in the nearby hills. Sheffield's so-called Lake District, public access is generally permitted, is only about half an hour by bus from the heart of the city. Away from it all, or getting together, dancing in the streets. You can take your choice. A city is people, a place for them to live in, to use. And this city's planning is on a human scale, never oppressive. From the very centre, you can easily lift up your eyes and see distant hills. The Lord Mayor's Parade features people of the city, workers of many kinds and shapes. The local police force plays a leading role in crime prevention and sets a national pattern in public awareness and cooperation. A far cry from the 19th century larks by these actors from the city's professional repertory company. 
the Crucible Theatre has a justifiable claim as one of the most advanced theatre designs in Europe. In the Don Valley, the area of heavy industry, British Rail say Sheffield has a more modern layout of railway facilities than any other industrial area of Britain. A motorway, the M1, enters this area, connected to the very heart of Sheffield by an urban motorway. There is also a large and modern depot for container traffic. There is thus ready access to transport for the many industries of the region. Sheffield high grade steel is essential for countless tools for other industries. Tools of the highest quality, reliable, trustworthy, giving long service even in the most arduous conditions. Tools for the home handyman, as well as for the skilled engineer. But it's not only steel products that are made in Sheffield. of drink as well as the packaging of food and the largest snuff makers in the country. Sheffield's industry is continually diversifying and to the south of the city within the boundary at Mosborough a whole new town within a town is being created. 5,000 acres for new industries, new communities, all within easy reach of the region's transport within reach of the major facilities of the parent city. Facilities for the arts and for study. Sheffield University is expanding rapidly towards an anticipated student population of 10,000 by the 1980s. Not unnaturally for an industrial city, there's a leaning towards science studies and a long tradition of cooperation between university and local industry. There are 16 major research organizations with establishments in Sheffield, including those for cutlery, for iron and steel, and for glass. Long before education was a municipal responsibility, Sheffield pioneered in the education of all ages. It now has one of the most closely integrated systems in the country. And the local authority, whilst respecting old and proven strengths, is alert to all new developments, new techniques, like this language laboratory at a college of further education. And in that newly expanding field of preschool playgroups, there is more pioneering by authority and voluntary organizations in healthy cooperation. Education is not merely vocation orientated. There is guidance in the use of leisure for all ages. In the new polytechnic alone, there are over two and a half thousand evening students. The oldest of Sheffield's existing hospitals was opened in 1797. One of the newest opened royally on the threshold of the 70s. No less than 10 of the city's hospitals now have the status of teaching hospital. And at the university there are large schools of medicine and dentistry. The children's hospital enjoys a high reputation nationally. And even if this city is like the rest of the country in not yet having solved the current problems of old people, at any rate, the task is being tackled, and ungrudgingly. East or west, the sea is never far away. An easy route for export and for import, for businessmen and for tourists, like these Swedish girls following in modern manner the path of their Viking ancestors. In 1847, Sheffield refused to welcome the Royal Agricultural Show. There was then no room for so many visitors. Today, there is plenty of first-class accommodation. 
and a civic pride in showing off the city, both its new developments and its old and golden frame of beautiful countryside. The city lies on the borders of Yorkshire and Derbyshire. And at its western edge, the boundary embraces part of the great and beautiful Peak District National Park. Here, as well as open country, are stately homes and castles to be visited, no less than 16 of them, open to visitors within 25 miles of the city centre. Sherwood Forest, Robin Hood's country, is only a few miles away. Of all my merry men, said Robin, by my faith I will none have, but little John shall bear my bow till that I want to draw. And little John's big grave is in the village of Hathersage, but five miles from Sheffield. Fisherman's country, walker's country, the Dale. River valleys eaten out of the limestone by persistent waters. Dovedale, Lathkill, Beresford, Monseldale, the beautiful dales. You may walk to the very brink of such beauty that only poets and artists can do descriptive justice to it. From the countryside, there are other pleasures. The cuisine to be tasted, the shops, old and new, a city to be explored. And if for a moment you are lost where to go, there's always someone ready to advise, especially perhaps if you are long. For every visitor, dark or fair, from near or far, there are good things to be found in the customary buying of souvenirs. Made in Sheffield. There's more than enough to satisfy anyone's taste and pocket. There's more to Sheffield than can be discovered in one day, even with the help of refreshment and the friendly spirit of the local. After all, there are people who live in the city and are still exploring it. It's got a long life. It'll still be there tomorrow. The central shopping area, much of it destroyed during the war, has been almost entirely rebuilt in the last decade. No city north of London has more department stores. The shops run roughly in a line over a mile long, a layout dictated largely by the natural contours and by history, but an arrangement that has distinct advantages for both pedestrians and vehicles. Good motorway and rail access and good shops make Sheffield a natural shopping centre for the large area of South Yorkshire and the North Midlands. Contemporary fashions are faithfully represented. Fashions in clothes or in food, delicatessen style, reminders of holidays abroad, accompanied by wines of the world. Modern supermarkets or traditional old English markets. As you wish, there's plenty to choose from.
the years when leisure and incomes were far less than now, Sheffield's nightlife was unsophisticated. Come evening, the majority of those who stopped work rested. Only a few had time and money to spend. It's different now. greater diversity of employment and the wider horizons of the shrinking world, with the general increase in leisure hours and leisure spending, Sheffield presents a nightlife expected of any modern big city. Theatre, cinemas, late night restaurants, discotheques, dance halls, several nightclubs, one of them the biggest in Europe, and internationally famous cabaret artists. Sheffield of the 70s swings. Dance ensembles and symphony orchestras of international reputation perform at the City Hall before an audience of up to 2,600. With this hall and smaller ones available, Sheffield is becoming more and more recognised as an attractive conference centre, offering all necessary services, including simultaneous translation facilities. In university halls of residence alone, out of term time, nearly 2,000 delegates can be accommodated. For conferences, as well as the city's general amenities and attractions, there are good communication services available to delegates. Two local daily newspapers, a regional television studio, and two local radio stations. They've good reason to be heard, these people of Sheffield. Good reason to make the visitor welcome reason to be proud of their city, its past, its present, its forward-looking developments, like Castle Square, an underground concourse with its ingenious roof of sky, another Civic Trust award. Yes, they've an understandable pride. They're Yorkshire, English, with deep and trusted roots, but they're not standing still far from it. They've made good changes here these last few years. It's truly a city on the move.